In the quiet corners of cinematic history, there exists a treasure trove of films that hold the power to stir our souls and transport us across time's elusive currents. Picture this, a dimly lit room, the soft flicker of a vintage projector, and the unmistakable crackle of anticipation in the air. The year was 1965, and a movie by the name of Moratry made its debut on the silver screen, casting an enigmatic spell over those lucky enough to witness its tale. Do you recall the first time the monochrome world of Moratry unfolded before your eyes? Perhaps it was the hushed reverence of a late-night screening, the glow of the black and white images seeping into your imagination. Or maybe it was an unexpected afternoon encounter, where the plot's twists and turns held you captive, refusing to release their grip even after the credits rolled. The echoes of that first encounter linger, a memory etched in time. Amidst the backdrop of World War II, Moratry wove a tapestry of intrigue and suspense. But as with any classic, it's the finer details that truly illuminate its brilliance. So, let's peel back the layers, shall we? Delve into the random facts that unveil the hidden facets of this cinematic gem. From untold stories behind the scenes to the curious inspirations that birthed its narrative, each revelation promises to deepen your appreciation for the artistry that graced the screen decades ago. Let the light of curiosity guide us as we navigate the labyrinth of Moriturus history, unearthing the gems that lie beneath the surface. Together, we'll unlock a new dimension of connection to a movie that has stood the test of time. And so, with the stage set and the projector poised, let the exploration commence. Brace yourself for a journey through time and celluloid, as we embark on an adventure into the heart of Moratory. Released in 1965, Moratory is a war drama film that unfolds against the backdrop of World War II. Directed by Bernhard Wicke, the film delves into the complexities of morality, identity, and personal sacrifice during times of conflict. Set in 1942, it follows an enigmatic British intelligence officer, Robert Crane, who is coerced into infiltrating a German cargo ship carrying a valuable supply of rubber. To maintain his cover, Crane must assume the identity of a disillusioned German officer, pitting him against a domineering and suspicious Captain Müller. The film's unique style emerges through its meticulous attention to character development and moral dilemmas, creating an atmosphere of tension and uncertainty that mirrors the wartime setting. Moratory stands as a testament to the human cost of war and the moral complexities individuals face in such circumstances. While it might not have achieved widespread fame, its exploration of wartime ethics has left a lasting impact on cinema's depiction of conflict and espionage. This thought-provoking film continues to be an underappreciated gem, prompting viewers to ponder the difficult choices individuals make in times of war and the haunting repercussions that follow. Marlon Brando and Trevor Howard, acclaimed actors of their time, shared not only the screen but also common roles in other films. Known for their versatile performances, they both graced mutiny on the bounty and Superman. However, it was the 1965 film Moratory that brought their talents together in a World War II thriller. At the heart of the film's production was the MV Blue Dolphin, formerly known as MV Cape Rodney, a ship born in the shipyards of Glasgow in 1946. This aged vessel, having traversed Pacific waters for years, became the focal point of the movie's maritime scenes. Its storied history and weathered appearance added authenticity to the on-screen drama. In an intriguing scene, Colonel Statter gazes at a painting in Crane's abode, sparking a conversation about its creator, Kirchner. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, a German painter and a founding member of Die Bruck, an avant-garde group of expressionist painters, faced the wrath of Nazi labeling of his art as degenerate. His tragic fate loomed large as he ended his life in 1938. Moratory, a cinematic gem from 1965, weaves these elements into a tapestry of intrigue, wartime struggle, and historical resonance. As the credits roll, it's clear that this film is more than just celluloid, it's a connection to the past, masterfully crafted on the screen. Box Office Bomb, the 1965 film Moratory proved a financial disaster for 20th Century Fox, garnering a mere $4,045,000 upon release, less than half of its $10.5 million break-even point, according to studio records. This setback came in the wake of the studio's previous high-profile financial fiasco, Cleopatra. The movie's underperformance was attributed in part to its cryptic title, which failed to resonate with the public. In a bid to salvage its prospects, the film underwent a strategic rebranding upon re-release, adopting the new moniker Saboteur, codenamed Moratory. Brando's reluctant promotion, renowned actor Marlon Brando, who starred in Moratory, initially shunned press engagements to promote the film. Despite contractual obligations, he evaded public appearances, much to the studio's chagrin. When cornered into attending a press conference, Brando drolly quipped, you will be unable to proceed in life unless you see Moratory. His acerbic statement proved enough for the studio to release him from further promotional duties. Identity concealed, in a poignant parallel to real-life Hollywood history, the character Esther, played by Janet Margolin, assumed the surname Goddard in Moratory to hide her Jewish heritage. This narrative choice mirrored the experience of actress Paulette Goddard, 
who changed her name from Marion Levy to downplay her own Jewish ethnicity. The film deftly intertwined fiction with reality, offering a cinematic reflection on the complexities of identity and ethnicity. In the annals of cinema, Moritri stands as a case study in both the unpredictability of box office fortunes and the intricate dance between art and reality. Its journey from a financial misstep to a rebranded resurrection and its exploration of identity make it a cinematic enigma worthy of examination. Reluctant Reunion, Trevor Howard and Marlon Brando's unlikely collaboration in Moritri in the realm of cinema history, clashes between co-stars are no rarity, and the tension that occasionally arises can forever color their on-screen collaborations. Such was the case with the legendary actors Trevor Howard and Marlon Brando, whose strained relationship during the filming of Mutiny on the Bounty was widely reported. However, the passage of time can sometimes pave the way for unexpected reunions. Enter Moritri, the 1965 war drama directed by Bernhard Wicke, which managed to achieve what initially seemed improbable. Trevor Howard, though initially reluctant, agreed to share the screen once again with Marlon Brando. Their on-screen interaction was limited to a single scene, a fleeting but impactful exchange that showcased the depth of their talents. Howard's portrayal in the role of a German ship captain and Brando's captivating performance as a disillusioned pacifist embodied the film's intense atmosphere and high-stakes drama. Moritri transcended its own behind-the-scenes history to become a memorable work of cinema. While Howard and Brando may not have shared extensive screen time, their momentary collaboration added an intriguing layer to the movie's narrative. The film's title itself, derived from the Latin phrase Moritri T. Salud and meaning those who are about to die salute you, sets the tone for the complex themes explored within its frames. As time has shown, the magic of cinema often has a way of eclipsing personal disputes, allowing actors to shine brightly even in the midst of tension. Moritri stands as a testament to the power of artistic dedication and the ability to create something enduring, even under challenging circumstances. So, when the credits rolled and the curtains fell, it was the performances that remained etched in the minds of the audience, a true testament to the actors' commitment to their craft. Marlon Brando, renowned for his acting prowess, once considered a different role on the set of the 1965 film Moritri. In an intriguing twist, Brando offered the directorial reins to Stanley Kubrick, a visionary filmmaker immersed in his own compelling ideas at the time. According to Kubrick's personal letter collection, the enigmatic director declined the proposition, opting to focus on his own captivating projects. This behind-the-scenes revelation sheds light on the creative dynamics surrounding the movie, where Brando's artistic ambitions briefly intersected with Kubrick's cinematic vision. Amidst the intricate plot of Moritri, a subtler connection to history emerges through a seemingly innocuous scene. Colonel Statter's gaze falls upon a painting gracing the walls of Crane's home. The work in question, a Kirchner, offers a tangible link to Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, a German painter who co-founded the groundbreaking expressionist collective known as Die Brücke or the Bridge. Kirchner's artistic legacy was marred by the Nazis, branding his creations as degenerate and leading to the destruction of many of his paintings. The artist's tragic end in 1938 further underscores the weight of his historical significance. This cinematic nod not only enriches the narrative of Moritri but also pays homage to an artist whose life mirrored the tumultuous era he lived through. Janet Margolin's portrayal of Esther in the film takes on a deeper resonance with a connection to real-life Hollywood history, as the character uses the surname Goddard to conceal her Jewish heritage. A poignant parallel emerges with the actress Paulette Goddard. The Hollywood star, born Marion Levy, altered her name to downplay her own Jewish ethnicity. Margolin's performance thus embodies a reflection of the complexities that some individuals navigated during that time, echoing the experiences of those who sought to subvert prejudice and embrace opportunities in the entertainment industry. In the tapestry of Moritri, these revelations elevate the viewing experience beyond its gripping storyline. Brando's proposal to Kubrick, the Kirchner painting's allusion to a persecuted artist, and the resonance of Margolin's character with Paulette Goddard collectively infuse the film with layers of historical and artistic context. As the credits roll, the movie stands not only as a tale of wartime intrigue but also as a canvas where these hidden connections add depth to the narrative, a testament to the power of cinema to intertwine fact and fiction. As we bid adieu, let the tendrils of time unfurl their tapestry, weaving the echoes of Moritri into your very essence. The celluloid whispers of 1965 beckon, a bridge between eras, a testament to the human spirit's resilience amidst the tempest of war. As the final frames fade, the flickering reels give birth to reflections, mirroring your own moments, your journey entwined with this cinematic treasure. Did you find yourself lost in the enigma of Marlon Brando's portrayal, navigating the intricate labyrinth of moral ambiguity? 
Or perhaps it was Yolbrinner's stoic grace that left an indelible mark, an embodiment of conviction and contradiction. Every frame, every uttered line, it's a mosaic of memories that lives within you. The symphony of emotions stirred, the silent contemplation provoked. Moritry stands as a mirror to your own narrative, a mirror that only you hold the key to. Let your thoughts flow, a river of introspection tracing the contours of your connection to this timeless piece of cinema. Share your fragments of insight, your fragments of connection. Each whisper contributes to the legacy of a film that dared to mirror our collective humanity in a crucible of chaos. And so, as the credits roll on this cinematic journey, we extend our gratitude to you, the voyager, the dreamer, the one who allows stories to paint colors upon the canvas of their heart. Thank you for letting Moritry find its place within you. Until we cross paths again, may your reflections be as deep as the ocean, and your memories as enduring as the stars above. Reflect, share, and continue to wander through the corridors of your cinematic experiences. Until then, remember, every frame finds its home within us.